Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of a Frugal Athlete Podcast. Uh, like I said, we are doing it a new way, and we will soon have updates on our new and improved podcast. But until then, it's just me. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you. Before we get started, before we get started, before we get started, can you please leave a review, rate it, even if you want to rate it two stars, even if you want to rate it five stars, that would be greatly be appreciated. It helps us get discovered. It helps us continue to improve. And if you're watching on YouTube, um, make sure you like and subscribe so you can get updates. We try to do this podcast on a weekly basis. For the past five or so weeks, I've been doing solo episodes as we, you know, in the back end, fix some things. We're about 220, no, sorry, 230 episodes deep. So we've been doing this for a while. So shout out to all of y'all that have supported from the very first episode up until now. We've had guests. We've done case studies. We've done different type of series. We've done solo episodes. We're continually trying to make this product better to give you a better listening experience so with that being said a frugal athlete podcast we're going to break down ryan pineda's wealth acronym so for context ryan is a former uh baseball player he grew up playing the minor leagues i think he made a made his mlb debut um played for you know quick cup of coffee um, but he really built his wealth um in real estate so we talk about how athletes you know are able to make a lot of money but in terms of building true wealth, you can't play sports forever. And when I started a frugal athlete, it was to highlight athletes that you may not know about. They can walk past the street. You wait, you're you not going to stop to get their autographs. You know, everyone wants to be Tom Brady. Everyone wants to be Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Everyone wants to be LeBron James. But that's those are anomalies. Those are the 1% of the 1%. And we're not saying that you shouldn't aspire to be there. But whether you're going to be a professional athlete a collegiate athlete, a high school athlete, an elite level athlete, it's going to end at some point in your life. So how are you leveraging the capital that you make and the career that you have to build a wealth, to build a life um, and to avoid the the struggles that a lot of athletes face? Um, A lot of athletes face the struggle with transition, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's uh, mentally. Um, So it's all about being efficient and learning how to leverage the capital that you make and being frugal. So with that being said, you know, I really took this wealth acronym that Ryan Pineda built um, and coined. And uh, I really want to break it down because I think it's a, a great base for you, whether you're an athlete or an individual that's listening to this episode um, to really apply to your daily life. So with that being said, uh, I, I mentioned Ryan because he's an athlete. You know, he made it to the highest level, minor league. MLB did his thing, but he didn't really tr- truly build wealth until he took what he learned from sport and applied it to business. Um, so don't be discouraged if you're an athlete transitioning to a new space. It could be sales. It could be entrepreneurship. It could be corporate. It could be whatever. You have the skills through the the principles and experiences that you learn from sport and can apply it to anything and excel at that as well. Ryan Pineda was able to find his second game. And uh, he's a great follow on Instagram, so make sure you follow him. You may or may not have his information in the show notes. But let's break down wealth. Um, And wealth can mean a bunch of different things. Um, I always think to the story of the businessman in Mexico, um, the businessman and the fisherman in Mexico. If you do not know that story, I highly suggest you look it up. Or you have to tune in next time, and I'll tell the story then. So I'm making you tune in next time. It's a trick I learned from marketing. You know, you got to leave them on a cliffhanger. So if you're too lazy to look up the story, just wait until next week and hit me in the comments because I might forget. But yeah, the businessman and the fisherman in Mexico, essentially understanding what true wealth means. But with that being said, let's break down wealth. So for those that are driving or doing a workout while listening, wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H. So Ryan Pineda breaks it down as wealth, W. For worship, E for education, A for affluence, L for lifestyle, T for team, H for health. So when you look at it initially, that's a great breakdown. I feel like it covers the basis of everything you need to have a wealth 
wealthy life. So let's start off with worship. Um, and whether you're, you know, practicing or not, or religious or not, or spiritual or not, I think when it comes to worship, you need to have a, a, a foundation, like a set of values, a moral compass, something that is your guiding North Star. And a lot of athletes, you know, and I don't want to generalize, but a lot of athletes, when they reach it to the pinnacle of their career, that's the end all be all. They don't have a moral compass. They don't have a set of values. They don't have a more uh, 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 their own set of commandments so that when they reach that highest level um, and things, you know, temptation starts to creep in, you're getting a little bit of money, you're doing this, you're doing that. They don't have a guiding compass to guide them on their journey because you're still on a journey, even though you've made it to the destination that you think you had. So in Ryan Pineda's case, obviously he's uh, religious or spiritual. Uh, he has worship at this top and it starts with wealth. W. E. Education. Uh, my biggest thing is if you're not learning, you're not earning. So you consistently got to continue to educate yourself. You got to invest in your knowledge. You got to put yourself in the rooms. You know, the quote that says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to move rooms. I think as an athlete, you do it in sport. You're always trying to find ways to get better, whether it's watching film, whether it's working out, whether it's, you know, studying from the greats. The same applies to your other practices, whether it's investing, whether it's relationships, whether it's um, passion projects. You're always you need to have education and it's not necessarily you got to go to school or you got to make sure you finish your degree, but you got to challenge yourself and put yourself in environments where you're educating yourself and you're learning both from people um, that may not be doing it the right way, but from people that are doing it the right way. So you can get a, a sense of both uh, sides of the seesaw. So education is key, especially as you, you know, step into new lanes. And fortunately, as you climb up the ladder, you know, from a corporate level or, you know, sports level, you're going to be exposed to different um, environments. And there's 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 learning and excellence through exposure. That's one mantra that, you know, I, I definitely live by. Yeah, when you're when you're putting yourself in situations that challenge you, you're going to learn by trial and error or by force or by fire. So continue to educate yourself and don't be afraid to, you know, take some bumps in the road. Affluence. Um, so affluence, when you think of wealth, usually when people think of wealth, they think of affluence. So like, what are you rocking? What are your assets? You know, you, know, you almost got to wear it. But affluence from Ryan Pernetta's perspective is a little bit different. It's, you know, your business moves, your career moves, your investments. So what does influence look like for you? Are your assets more than your liabilities? That's true affluence. It's not about what designer clothes you're wearing. It's not about, you know, what the latest car that you're driving. It's not about, you know, having an influx of, you know, money that you're earning because you can earn a million dollars and still be uh, broke. There's a lot of broke millionaires out there um, that we just don't know about um, or we do know about. That they just do a good job of hiding their um, hiding their struggles through their wealth. So affluence, when you think of affluence, you want to think of you know, stability. When I think of wealth, I think of stability. It doesn't matter if you're going through a recession. It doesn't matter if you're going through a good time. You you, you know you're stable. Um, obviously, you're going to have to make adjustments um, depending on the seasons or depending on the downturns and the upturns. Um, but when you think of wealth, you think of like rock solid, stable, like can stand um, anything. And uh, affluence is a key cog to what that looks like. So for Ryan Pineda, um, that's real estate. You know, it could be different for a, a, another individual. Uh, myself, I'm more of the serial entrepreneur. So when it comes to affluence, I like to have uh, multiple businesses. When it comes to stocks, I'm more of a, a dividend a blue chip. You know, I like my solid dividend paying stocks. Um, but there are many paths. There are many ways to the top of the mountain. You just got to find the right path for you. Um, as it as it pertains to affluence. Um, L, lifestyle. So what's your lifestyle and is the lifestyle um, sustainable? I think a lot of times when you think of, and I, you know, I hate to generalize, but, you know, this is what we see on a common general basis. You know, athletes, we're so used to a certain type of lifestyle. You know, we've been coddled our career because, you know, we've been able to play at an elite level. And then when that's all said and done, we have no idea how to navigate. 
And the thing with athletes is when you're done playing, um, you're expected to get treated the same way as you were when you were playing. And that's the circle of life. It's a new set of athletes that are coming in. And, you know, no, I don't want to say no one likes a former athlete, but there are very few former athletes that still have the same, uh, I don't want to say charisma, but the same juice as they did when they were playing. Um, so, like, if LeBron James goes to a basketball game, cameras are going to be all on him. I can go to a soccer game and be chilling. You know, a couple of people might recognize me most more often than not. I can be cool. So understanding that as an athlete can help you understand the lifestyle that you um, can live. And not to say that you need to downsize or downplay your accomplishments or downplay the lifestyle that you want. But when it comes to lifestyle, you have to have an understanding of where you're currently at based on the whole wealth spectrum, but also the type of lifestyle you want in relation to where you're at currently. And um, I think that's really important because as individuals, you know, there's different concepts like living like the Joneses, you know, different things that, you know, may affect how we go about our lifestyle. But at the end of the day, it's our lifestyle to live and not anyone else's. Um, Let's move on to the next one. T for team. You know, the famous quote is, if you want to go fast, go alone, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So the best individuals that are successful, they have a team, whether it's their board of advisors, uh, whether it's their kitchen cabinet, whether it's, you know, having a fall guy, whether it's, you know, you have uh, someone that's going to audit your auditor, you know, you have to have the right people in place to make sure um, you're able to, you know, go farther. You know, the great thing, you know, we, we think of guys like LeBron, LeBron James, the great thing about LeBron James is that he has one of the best teams um, around and I got to see it firsthand when I inter- uh, when I did a internship with uninterrupted so you know about Mav Carter that's kind of when you think about you know so let me take it back so when you think about like any business person there's a visionary and there's an integrator so the visionary is the guy with the, the lofty ideas he's the, the more of the creative and then you have the integrator more of the operations the person that's going to be able to be behind the scene and get stuff done so when you think about athletes, and I, I definitely did a couple episodes on this. We've broken it down multiple times. Definitely going to have a course on it at some point. No promises, though. Um, we talk about, you know, athletes and then, like, their business managers. So when you think of LeBron James, you have Maverick Carter. When you think of Kevin Durant, you have Rich Kleiman. When you think of Steph Curry, you think of Jerron Smith. So these, you think of Serena Williams. Um, I'm forgetting the name of her you know, integrator, manager, but she handles all her deal flow, her business affairs and different things like that. So let's take it back to LeBron James um, and LeBron James specifically in relation to Mav Carter. LeBron James is the forward facing, you know, basketball star, brand ambassador, leader in, you know, trend setter, game changer. And then Maverick Carter is the one behind the scenes helping facilitate his vision for his you know, lifestyle, his portfolio and getting it done. If we expand it, LeBron James, he has his whole team. He has uh, Rich Paul. He has Ernie Ramos. He has Paul Rivera. He has a whole team of people that are helping him keep the main thing, the main thing and help everyone go forward. And a lot of times as athletes, we want to do everything ourselves. I struggle with this tremendously. It wasn't until I brought on Adrian and he can attest to it with the frugal athlete is where we really try to make strides. You know, you can only be everything for so long, whether it's, you know, I was doing the podcast, I was doing the podcast edits, I was doing the podcast marketing, I was doing the outreach for sales, I was doing the blog post, I was doing the networking. You, it, you only have 24 hours in a day. There's only so many things you can do. But when you started delegate to elevate, one of my favorite, you know, quotes when it comes to business, when you start to outsource, when you start to trust people and enable them and put them in positions to win ultimately to help you win the sky's the limit so everyone remembers winners you know so while you may not be the star player everyone remembers winners would you rather be the you know star player on a a horrible team or you know a great role player um, and end up winning um, you know winning quite a bit so if you look at the Warriors Steph Curry Clay Thompson Draymond Green you know when when you're on a winning team you you, you're going to get recognized 
no matter if you're player one or player five. People know Robert Ory to this day for his seven championships. Steve Kerr, five championships. Because they were on good teams, they knew their role, and they would, and, and like the team goes farther. So I think it's really important for athletes, first and foremost, to find the right team. You know, financial manager, you got to find your starting five. Financial manager, lawyer, uh, business manager, mentor, and uh, we broke this down. Depending on what you want, so you can have a social media manager, preferably accountant. So you get your starting five, and then from there you build it out and uh, continue to build. Um, and then lastly, H for health. So health, obviously, you know, as athletes, um, you know, we only think of physical, but mind, body, and spirit. So you got to make sure, you know, mental health is a big uh, forefront issue these days. Um, but it's always been an issue, but now it's coming into the limelight. Um, but you got to make sure your mind's right. You got to make sure your body's right. You got to make sure your, your spirit's right. Um, if you can get all three of those from a health perspective, things tend to be a lot easier and it's a lot easier to be successful from a wealth perspective. Cause you've seen people, um, when they say like money doesn't mean everything, um, it's because the health is not right. You know, their mind's not right. Their, their body's not right. Their, their spirit's not right. So, you know, what's good is what's good. What good is it to have all this money if, if you're not healthy, you know, within. So making sure that your your health is wealth um, will help be a barometer to actually build wealth as a whole ecosystem. So I really like this breakdown from Ryan Pineda. I'm really going to continue to use it for my own uh, Rolodex. I definitely think you should, too. Um, but that being said, um that's it for this week. I'm really excited to share with you. Um, we're going back to guest podcasts um, very shortly. And then heading into the new year, uh, we, we've already established our, our new podcast uh, series. So uh, we're excited and uh, we really appreciate y'all for your support. But with that being said, catch y'all next week.